If you love Chevys, then this is the place for you. The Menard Chevy Series, where we tour the country to find the finest race cars and rides that are part of the bow tie breed. Welcome to Menard Chevy Series, coming to you today from Virginia Motorsports Park. It's a picture-perfect summer day, and what better way could there be to enjoy some incredible Chevrolets? Hello again, everyone. I'm your host this week, Ted Jones, and let's get things started with a Chevy you're not going to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a 1994 Chevrolet Geo. But I bet you never saw one quite like this, Geo. This guy has gone completely berserk with this car. Let's get started right up here. First of all, a big wee and blower right here to get things going. But that's not what he's really depending on for most of his power. As a matter of fact, it's underdriven. Two Holly four barrel carburetors, not little ones either, okay, with a big bug catcher up here. And you got it, potent amounts of NOS, nitrous oxide injection. He follows the nitrous theme all the way through the entire car. If you take a look inside on the dashboard, he's got two nitrous bottles. Look at the console he's done right there with his competition shifter. Even the armrests for the door latches are tiny little nitrous oxide bottles. Beautiful paint job on the outside, very creative, very imaginative. Gorgeous wheels. Look at those big meats back there on the back. Yeah, serious, and I'd say he probably needs those. Then four, count them, four bottles of NOS nitrous oxide, a fuel cell in the middle, and then a cute little touch like he needs it, huh? You can crank it up, but I guess that's in case you run out of gas. Well, maybe not. All in all, a fantastic job. What an imagination. I'd say he's done with it, but uh, you never know. This is our first producer's choice. Time now to take a look at our Duracell Copper Top Award winner. Well, this week's Crank It with the Copper Top Award, sponsored by Duracell, is Kevin Hurley, his 1968 Camaro. And there's a very interesting story. See, he didn't buy this car all at once. Yes, actually, about nine years ago, we had, we had uh, bought it uh, from a, it was behind a garage. Actually, didn't have no front end on it, and basically it was a shell from the front doors back. Now, to make this competitive in drag racing, he has fiberglass doors, an entire front clip, fenders, scoop, hood and everything is also fiberglass. Of course, it all comes apart with these Zeus fasteners. He can run that eh, pretty quick in a quarter mile. Six O's right at 115 and eight, and quarter mile probably 990s at about 138. Handles great, it's straight as arrow, don't pull a bit. And when you look at the engine compartment, he has an obvious engine setback, kind of like the old FX days. Somebody had already put the motor plates in, which was, uh, it looked like moved back right at 10 to 12 inches. So we had to move the seat back 10 to 12 inches. So I get my big legs in there. It has good traction off the line. Now, since he did all the repair work on this car himself, he and his wife put it together, you'd think that he uh, probably was a mechanic. Well. He doesn't work on cars, he repairs something else. I'm a registered nurse. I work, I've uh, been a registered nurse for 20 years. Now as the Copper Top Award winner, Kevin was located next to the Duracell display, which gave us a chance to catch up with them to find out more about the product. We build them for uh, just about every vehicle on the road. Uh, everything's manufactured in Pennsylvania. The batteries are built to meet the original equipment uh, specs of the battery size, cold crank amps, reserve capacity. The dual terminals uh, are uh, more of an optional type, but the line is made up of exact fit original equipment replacement battery. Coming up on the Menard Chevy Series, we'll get an up-close look at a 1967 Chevelle with an impressive pedigree. Stay with us. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. 
Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Series. The slogan says Virginia is for lovers, and they must mean Chevy lovers because this place is packed with great cars, including this rare producer's choice. Now this 1967 Chevelle, beautiful marina blue, one of my favorite all-time colors for Chevrolet, drew my attention. No, it's not just your ordinary 67 Chevelle, although it is immaculate. See, this is what caught my attention. Baldwin Motion. This is a rare car, folks. I bought it from Joe Rosen in Long Island, New York. Baldwin Motion Chevrolet. Oh, you've got original owner. I'm the original owner. Of a Motion Chevelle. Yeah, phase three. Now, the call-out badge, as you know, all the Motion Chevelles came with a 427. But this is a phase three. They board and stroke the 427 phase three cars to 485. Whoa. Was it, was it a toy? It was a bad boy. <laughs> it was a bad boy. And now he's made it even bigger. It's 540 cubic inches now, 698 horsepower to back tire. Whoa. Now, you know, your 67 Camaros, because they had the fake vents right here on the hood, they did not have a scoop like that. So I asked him, where'd you find that scoop? The hood scoop is an invention. I couldn't find one that I wanted. I wanted the SS louvers and the scoop. So you can't buy what you want, you make what you want. He made a, a custom console in here, and I looked at these seats and I said, wait a minute, those aren't Chevelle seats. They came out of a 69 GTO with, you know, recovered in leather to match the car. A Pontiac seats in a Chevy. Well, they fit my big butt better. <laughs> now, you'd think being an older guy, he wouldn't be that much into stereo. Two 481 amplifiers behind the board with those, look at those big thumpers right there. Done a nice job trimming it out, but still, when it's all said and done, as neat and as custom as the car is, the thing that I like the best is that right there. Time now for this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. This is George Hebler's car. It's a 1992 Corvette, and uh, George actually got this car given to him as a gift. She was a gift from my wife, and she said to me just one afternoon that she wanted to look for a used car for my son, his name was Bob. And uh, she looked in the newspaper, and she said, how, how about a Corvette? And I was like, for Bob? She goes, no, it's for you. We went up and looked at the car, and the car would look great and all, but I asked I said, hey, does it run? How's it run? Hey, so it needs a tune up. We started it up and there was antifreeze shooting up in tailpipes. So I, I got it cheap enough. I figured out if I have to put a new engine in it. We tore it apart and made, all it was was a boat head, head gasket. So we got lucky there, rebuilt it, and now I drive and enjoy it. To look at this car, you'd never be able to guess it has over 100,000 miles on it. I drive it to shows. Uh, we go to like Ocean City, Maryland every year. Uh, Corvette, Corvette's a car loud, of course, we do all that, yes, we, we drive it to all the shows. Now for you Corvette enthusiasts, the Z07 was actually a forerunner to what later became known as the Corvette Transport. Basically it's an LT1 with the Z07 performance package. The Z07 uh, gives it the big ZR1 brakes and 13-inch brake rotors, as well as the, the heavy-duty suspension. It's part of the family. It ain't going. It ain't going nowhere. So it'll go to your son later. If my son or daughter, yeah, they'll have to fight over it. Now, one of the big attractions at every one of these Chevrolet events has to be what's called the swap meet. That's old parts. Some of them are very rare parts, hard to find. Sometimes it's brand new equipment mixed in with the rare old parts. You can find just about anything at one of these events, including, hey, a nice mini T with a Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engine. Every kid would like to have one of those. Stay with us for more of the Menard Chevy Series because when we come back, we'll check out one of our award winners, a gorgeous 1967 Chevelle. The hits just keep on coming here at the Menard Chevy Series at Virginia Motorsports Park. Nearly every model Chevy can be found here, but we also discovered an outsider in our midst. 
Oh, golly. I had to include this as a producer's choice. A 1951 Ford lead sled. Now, you're asking yourself, what's a Ford doing at a Chevrolet series event? It's got a Chevy motor. They call it a conversion. This belongs to Donnie Bryant. What a job he's done. Back in the 50s, this was the hot thing. Why'd they call them lead sleds? Because we didn't use fiberglass. We didn't use Bondo and putty, okay? We used to lead everything in. First off, you start out by shaving the door handles and locks. The other thing you have to have on one of these, just gotta do it, are lakes pipes. You see that right there? That's called a lakes pipe. That was made popular back in the Salt Lake days, back when they used to run there. He's got that. You had to have fender skirts. Then you also wanted to have spinner hubcaps or spinner wheel covers like he has, and wide white wall tires. That was all a part of it. Then you came up front right here, and one of the things you did is they called it nosing the car. You took all the chrome, all the emblems and everything off the front of it, made it smooth. The other thing you did with lead sleds back then is you sink the headlights back in the fender. That's called, it's called Frenching the Headlights. And you never stayed with the stock grill. You had to find another grill out of another car to put in to make it yours, to make it custom. The other thing you had to have are dummy spotlights. Now some of them had real spotlights. These are a pair of dummy spotlights. Then you chop the top. They call it chopping. Okay, you take a little bit out of the top, drop it down. Then when you go to the interior, you wanted to do what's called lipstick tuck and roll. You see the little thin cord line in red, that's the lipstick. You see the tuck and roll interior even down on the floor mats. Back here on the package tray, they continued on. Then finally, the other thing you had to do is deck the car. That's where you took the manufacturer's emblem and everything off the back. Okay, and you decked the very back of the car. Then if you were really cool, you wanted to have a Continental kit. This one has some really nice looking artwork on it. He calls this Great Balls of Fire. As a matter of fact, he even has that embroidered into the back seat back there. Yeah, I like this. It's definitely a producer's choice. Now let's check out the original Parts Group Award winner. Well, this week's OPGI Original Award winner goes to Michael Taylor, his gorgeous 1971 Chevelle. Really a gorgeous car. The neat story behind this is how long Michael's had it. 38 years. Wait a minute, 38 years? Yes, sir. I paid $1,200 for it back in 77. Oh my God, how old were you? I was 16. I've had it, like I said, I'm the second owner. I'm not the original, but I'm the second owner. This is your first car? Yes, sir, first car. And you kept it? Yes, sir. $1,200? $1,200. OK, I gave you $1,500. Uh, no, it'll be a little bit more than that. <laughs> now, I don't remember Chevrolet offering a paint color quite like this. No, it was green, but not this metallic green. I like the ghost image of the 71 Chevelle, and I don't think I've ever seen a green bow tie. He did that himself. Nice touch. Is it the original engine? Not the original engine, but it's the original transmission in the car and the original rear. And it had a small block? Yes, sir, it had a small block, 350. Boy, you've done a really great job with it. Do you drive it much? I drove it this morning. I own 45 minutes to get here. I don't own a trailer, and I drive it everywhere I go. Uh, not a trailer queen. No, sir, not a trailer queen. Drive it everywhere. Boy, that engine is gorgeous. It didn't look that way in the showroom back when he was 16 years old and bought this car. I assure you, he's done a beautiful job with that gorgeous small block. I like the Edelbrock. Look at the polish on that intake and the aluminum heads. Now, he's got a real piece here. Well, I bought stuff from Original Parts. To get it restored yeah. to the condition it's in? Yep, the grill and the emblems, the doors, wheel moldings, seat covers and door panels. A whole lot of other stuff, a little small stuff. So it's done now? It's done, it's done. So now you sell it? No, I'm not gonna sell it. <laughs> well, here's another producer's choice. After all, it is a Chevrolet series show, right? You gotta do Chevys. How about 1954 version? Look at this baby blue beauty. What a job he has done with this 54 Chevy. It belongs to Mark Haynes. I like 
first of all, the fact that he didn't want no little puny six cylinder. I mean, that's what would have come in these. They didn't come out with the 265 V8 until 1955. So in 54, he said, here's what they should have done in Detroit. How about a small block V8 350 with a big huffer sitting on top, two aluminum four barrel carburetors, breathing, standing loud and proud. A lot of chrome plating. You see he's got also steel braided lines and everything to detail it out. And this is what would have been the top of the line back in 1954. It's the Bel Air. That's the best they had. They hadn't come out with the Impala yet. Look inside. I'm sure these are not vintage 1954 Chevrolet seats. No, indeed they aren't. A custom console. He did a really nice job with that. It looks like it's metal. I don't think that's fiberglass. Looks metal to me with a nice Hurst shifter on it and runs all the way to the back seat where he put two cup holders. This is an obvious choice for a producer's choice. Look at the instrument cluster. That was probably a clock over there, and that's now a tachometer where the clock was. But I think he has the original speedometer that shows up to 110 miles per hour. Well, now, with this small block V8 blown, yeah, he probably would do that. With that old six-cylinder, no way, baby. Stay with us. When we return to the Menard Chevy Series, we'll check out a 1950s packing over 500 cubic inches of rat power. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Rock Auto, all the parts your car will ever need. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Drive Duracell, crank with the copper top. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Series. Now, we've been telling you all about the events going on here at the Chevrolet Series at Virginia Motorsports Park, but we caught up with Brian Pierce to find out more about what happens at this fantastic facility. We know Virginia Motorsports Park, we not only drag race, but we do other motorsports as well. We truck pulls, we have mud bogs, we have motocross racing, we have BMX racing, and of course we do so many oddball stuff too, is like the Rugged Maniacs, the Mud Runs, 5K Foot Races, and the County Fair, all here at Virginia Motorsports Park. Boy, have they got drag racing action. They run ET bracket cars. That's a funny car back there, a special funny car that's being honored. People in line to get the autograph of the legendary Carol Bunny Burkett. Yeah, she's still around, she's still got that double B or alcohol funny car. I am still racing, I'll be 70 in two weeks, but this is my 50th anniversary in drag racing. I will drive this year too. No kidding, you're still gonna drive the funny car. Absolutely, I'm actually building a 1975 Mustang to run nostalgia with the 79 Corvette. The, the fans still line up to get your autograph. Well, I think that's like the number one reason that I am out here. When the fans quit coming, I'll stay home. Our final award is from Minty's, available at Menards, along with other fine true science products. Our Mindy's Top Dog Award this week on the Chevy Manufacturer Series goes to Marvin Stone from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, his beautiful 1957 Chevrolet. He's had it quite a while. 36 years. No! Yes, sir. It's part of the family. It's one of the family members. It was a street car 36 years ago, and then I got into drag racing, ran the circuit for a while. The last restro was a frame off and it was done over at uh, in Tarver, North Carolina by Donald Hilbert. This is a really rich paint color. I bet it's got to be custom. It's hard to put a name on it. The guys just kept putting one coat after another till they got it where I wanted and I said stop there. Marvin chose a Griffin radiator and look at that 502 crate motor. Wow. Marvin must not like small blocks. Well, really, I do, but I, I, I wanted to put a, a rat in there, didn't I? Yeah, a big crate motor. That's yes, a big sir. rat. Yes, sir, 502. The gauge cluster is original 1957 Chevy, but look, he's put some nice analog aftermarket gauges into the original cluster, including a speedometer that goes to 140 miles per hour. Now, that's cool. Being an old drag racer, 
You ever turn the tires? Very seldom. I don't drive it once in a while in the driveway at home. That's about it. That's about it, guys. It's just too pretty. Thank you. And to be pretty correct, he went with a nice set of Krager SS wheels. That looks like he came right out of the late 50s. And that's this week's Mini's Top Dog Award. Our final producer's award had to go to a pair of trucks owned by Bubba Carter. He's got an HHR, really nice, and a Chevy S10. But what's special about these? Look at the artwork on this one. This one is called War, and he has murals painted on the side of it from all the different wars over the years. Obviously, here's the stars and bars with the gray and the white, so that's the Civil War happening right there. He has scenes from World War II, World War I, the Revolutionary War, all over the entire thing. Some of them are close-ups. Check out the little gun right here used to hold the hood up. Over here in the side, more war decorations. And clear on the back back here, he's got an American flag, tri-folded like it should be. Then over here on the other side, he has the HHR done up and he calls it Western. He's got Bubba Saloon, Carter Sundries. Looks like probably the shootout at the OK Corral on this side right here. Then if you come over to this side of it, Back here we've got some uh, Native American Indians. Looks like they're in war in the Western. Some very impressive autographs up here. And a beautiful Navy American squaw right up here on the front. Well, it's been Chevys of all sizes today in Petersburg, Virginia. And it sure has been an eclectic mix of machinery. So be sure to join us next week when the Menard Chevy Series heads off to Martin, Michigan in our quest for the best Chevys in the land. See you then. <laughs>